kak banoi mitchell millennial day va hom nai toi mo no chit ve san fam ko xiaomi apple va samsung if you guys didn't know i'm bilingual i speak vietnamese today i'm at a beautiful park here in ho chi minh city aka saigon vietnam and the other day i was talking about ecosystems in my discord server and i wanted to bring that conversation here to you guys now nine times out of ten when we talk about ecosystem the first thing that we think of is the apple ecosystem why because apple has been doing this ecosystem thing and leveraging its range of products together to make a better user experience for a while they were doing it kind of before samsung definitely before Google, and Apple is kind of infamous now for creating this walled garden, whereas on the Android side of things, we have ecosystems that are a little bit more open. Now, I've gotten to experience three different ecosystems, and I want to bring this conversation to you guys. The very first ecosystem that I had experience with was the Xiaomi ecosystem, and this was a little while back. Some small things might have changed, but more or less, the Xiaomi ecosystem in China is apparently fantastic. Their integration with Xiao AI, the actual software and ROMs on the Xiaomi devices make for a really compelling ecosystem along with the rest of their home products and the rest of the products that they make. And more often than not, if you have a Chinese Xiaomi device, you will have a certain amount of integration with other products built into the ROM that comes. Ooh, check out that light. How's that look? Oftentimes you'll have uh, certain features that get baked into the China ROM, and when you get an international device, you are stripped of that ecosystem. But for example, uh, when I bought some Xiaomi headphones, uh, I had Xiao AI and I had a pop-up animation that was integrated within the ROM that came on that Chinese device. Unfortunately, uh, if you wanted to take advantage of this with a ROM that was not the Chinese ROM, you would have to sideload Xiao AI that only came in Chinese. And even then, even though I have a ton of other Xiaomi products like the Mi Band, like Xiaomi Lights, you would have to install separate apps on to that China ROM based device uh, in order to get kind of the full ecosystem experience, which really just kind of felt half-baked and it didn't feel like a proper integration with apps, products, software, and hardware coming together, which is ultimately what the point of an ecosystem is. It's to leverage different products within a company's lineup of offerings so that they can give you a better overall user experience and that kind of complements each other. Now, the next experience I had with an ecosystem of things was the Samsung ecosystem when I got a Samsung Smart Tag to go along with my S21 Plus. And I have to say that this was an absolutely phenomenal experience. The way Samsung integrates the smart things into their uh, One UI and the way Samsung leverages the whole Samsung Find My Network to enable users to have this smart tracker that basically works pretty well in most countries. Um, I used it to track a bag of mine while flying across the world. I made a whole video about it and all that linked for you guys up here. Um, that was a really, really cool experience. And I was actually extremely bummed when I left my Samsung device because I wasn't able to continue leveraging a smart tag. If I was going to, ooh, again, that, that really pretty light, if I was going to buy another smartphone as like a work dedicated device, I would likely buy another Samsung device simply because I love the way Samsung has a, like ecosystem. They have smart tags, they have headphones and the Samsung ecosystem is probably the best competition that we have for Apple right now. The last ecosystem on this list is actually the Google ecosystem. Now, my Pixel Buds Pro would work with any Google device, but they work extremely well with my Pixel 7 Pro. That said, Google has opened up their ecosystem to other Android devices. You can download an app on any Android device so that you can utilize the Pixel Buds. And the Pixel Buds are really just trying to leverage the power of Google Assistant and overall just give you a better, smarter, more like internet of things connected headphone experience, which in my opinion is phenomenal. Um, they also include non-Pixel devices with this. And every time I open up my Pixel Buds Pro case next to my Mi Pad 4 that's running an Android open source ROM, I get a prompt that we see that you have another Pixel product nearby. Would you like to connect these headphones with, uh, with your tablet? 
And that kind of just kind of helpful integration with the overall Google ecosystem, IoT, Internet of Things, makes me want to continue using Pixel devices, makes me want to continue using stock Android because of how well and how seamlessly that works and because it just adds convenience to the overall user experience. I want to really quickly draw one distinction. When we talk about ecosystem, when we talk about products working together, this isn't just an application that you install on your Android device that gives you more functionality. If that was the case, there would be a Halo ecosystem. There would be a variety of other ecosystems that you could actually get into and you could mix and match products. Whether or not you want to buy a line of products from one manufacturer, that's a decision that you have to make. But personally, I feel like if you're in the market for a pair of active noise canceling headphones, you want them to be around $150, $200, and you plan to stay in the Android ecosystem of things, I personally prefer Google's approach because it's a little bit more open, right? And maybe after you buy a pair of Pixel Buds Pro and you see how they integrate uh, into your device, you might wanna buy a Pixel and to have that integration, maybe a Pixel tablet as well, uh, possibly a Chromebook if you wanted to kind of jump all into the Google online computing space. But overall, having integration into our device ROMs, having integration uh, into the operating system of a device really just adds to the overall positive user experience and just kind of making it more seamless. Now, whether or not you think that's like a power user thing or a non-power user thing, that's really your decision. But ultimately, I like things working together and I find personally that it makes me want to recommend those products because they have a better, more seamless user experience. And overall, people just end up liking those products more, especially if they're non-techies.